Hello everybody, James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining me. And today I wanted to take my time and make a tutorial on how to make a figure four deadfall trap. Now you have seen us make deadfall traps before, um, but they've always been in a knife review. So the focus is on the knife. So we just briefly touch upon the, the figure four and then we move on. Uh, two, two videos ago, we did a review on the Hidden Woodsman slash LT Wright Puko knife, and we carved a figure for Deadfall, and it actually caught us a pack rat to cook and eat. So that was really cool. Uh, previously to that, I think we did one when we were featured on a Prepared Mind 101 video on his channel. Um, so anyways, like I said, the focus has always been on the knife, so we just kind of brushed upon the, the figure four and moved on to the next test. So this time, I wanna take my time and show you step by step on how to carve one, how to make one. And what I like about them is if you're in the wilderness, if you've got sticks and you got rocks and a, a trusty cutting tool, you can make yourself several of them and you can harvest game from off the land. So if you're interested in learning, stick around. Let's get started. Okay, now before we begin, I forgot to mention one thing that's very important is understand that these traps are illegal in many areas. So just check your local areas. Best thing to do is practice them in private property, such as your backyard. Uh, you really don't want to practice them in public land or somewhere close to where somebody's pet or somebody's child can go and mess around and they can get hurt and then you get in trouble. Just understand that. So best thing to do is practice them in private property or private land so you don't risk any of those things. So I don't want you guys to get in trouble and then you know come come to me. So now you know that, and knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! Okay, so I already found myself a large flat rock, nice and heavy. I'm trying to focus on getting a small rabbit. So this rock's gonna be pretty good for that. Next, I need to go find myself a stick to start carving. Now, what am I gonna use to start carving that stick? Well, I'm gonna be bringing in my Mora Cans Bowl. And longtime viewers are gonna know that this is my all-time favorite knife. This knife is only 35 bucks. I own knives that cost 10 times that amount, and yet I find myself reaching for this one more often than any other knife. And that Scandinavian grind is gonna come in handy for making precise carving, precise notches on the wood. And then to help me as well, I'm gonna have my Victorinox Swiss Army Knife Trekker, particularly the saw. So when I'm gathering some sticks, or once again, also for notches, this is gonna help me out, make some precise cuts. So that's what we're gonna be using today. So what we have available here in the desert is this plant right here. This is the soap tree yucca. And every spring, it grows this stalk that eventually flowers and then eventually fruits. This one, this green one, is this year's stalk. So it's still developing, but you can find the previous year's stalks and you can see they're getting nice and dry. Um, you want to get one that's probably like about a year or two old. You don't want to go older than that because then it's very brittle and it'll just, you know, break apart on you. So let me get, bust out my saw, my Swiss Army knife saw and start sawing this one straight through. And you want to be careful if you're in the desert because you see these spines, they are very uncomfortable and you will bleed. So just be cautious. There we go. And I personally like mine a little shorter than an inch in thickness. This is pretty decent. And it's long enough where I can break this into three size pieces. And in case I make a mistake, I still have a little bit more that I could work with. So I could just break all this stuff off and I still have some more sticks so I can still do some more carving in case I messed one of them up. So this will do. All right, folks, so we have our yucca stick and we're gonna saw off a piece. Um, I mean, this depends on you and especially what you're after. I'm going after rabbit. So I'm gonna go up to about here. That's about nine inches, 10 inches. And I'm gonna slice this. Then I'm gonna slice a second one about the same exact size. So about right here, I'm gonna start sawing this. And you wanna saw it straight, as straight as possible. Okay, folks, so what we're gonna do is we got the yucca stick, I already sawed a piece off. And the length of it depends on you, depends on um, really what you're after. I'm going after rabbit, so my, my pieces are gonna be a little bit larger. Also, because they're larger, they're a little bit easier, in my opinion, to, to teach someone, because you could see a lot more intricacies in it. Okay, so this size is about eight to nine inches. 
give or take. And then I'm gonna cut a piece about the exact size. So about right there. We want them roughly about equal size. Then this can be a little <laughs> slow going. But yeah, just saw the piece and try to saw it straight. Here we go. Our first two pieces. And then we'll save this piece for later. Okay, so we have these two pieces, right? The thicker piece, I'm sorry, the thicker piece would go down here. This thicker piece, if you notice, it's slightly, not, not by a long shot, but it's slightly a bigger piece. We're gonna wanna keep that one for the base. It's gonna go up here. So get the slightly thinner one. Get your knife. Okay, so we're gonna get this slightly thinner one and we're gonna start carving like a flathead screwdriver. So give it that A shape. So we got one side here, go completely around 90 degrees, I'm sorry, 180, and start on the other side. And back and forth, take your time. You don't have to rush it. want it to look as even as possible not too bad but yeah you want it to look pretty even okay so this is just about even now personally what I like to do now from here is I'm gonna start over carving one side so we know that it's longer so we want it a little bit uneven we want the angle still straight but this is gonna help you remember which side to set the trap on. So if you look at it this way, one, one side is shorter than the other. You see that? And that's just a little, a little cheat. So you remember to set this trap at the exact same angle all the times and you don't mix them up. So yeah, just a little visual reminder, visual cue. There you go, that's easier. You can see that this side is longer than this side. Okay, and whenever we set the trap, this is always gonna remind you that the longer side always goes inwards of the four. That way you don't mix them up and you're doing this and this, that always keeps you, it's just a reminder. So you don't have to do it, it just, I just find it easier. Okay, so now that we have this done, now it's time to get started on this piece. And we're gonna start notching about two inches from the top. So we're gonna give it a little bit of a seven notch so these fit onto each other okay so about right here we're gonna start sawing so you just want to go straight you don't want to cut through a little bit of an angle like a seven little less than halfway you don't want to go all the way halfway that's pretty good okay then we get our knife see that And then remember, the long side of the screwdriver goes on the inside, and there we go. That's the start. That'll fit in there. Okay, so we have our screwdriver over here. We have the, the one with the, the longer side right here. Okay, and then we have our seven notch right there. Okay, so you see the beginnings of the figure four. Now we're gonna go to the very end of this stick up here and we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna give it that flathead screwdriver angle. You wanna make sure that it's precise. 
right beneath the other one. So you want to make sure that it's, I'll show you in a little bit. In fact, probably easier, what I should have done is told you is at the exact bottom of this piece right here, follow it down and then start flattening that out. And this one doesn't matter. You don't have to make them two different sizes. These can be the exact same size. It won't make much of a difference. Okay, you see how that's not even? How oh, I need to kind of tighten this part up. And that's getting there. It doesn't have to be exactly precise as long as it holds the stick. And you're going to find yourself that you're going to keep coming back to them and, you know, modifying this or that. So it's not, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Okay, so let's get our stick again. Once again, the long side fits here. And there we go. And then you can notice that down here we have a little bit of a flat. You want to get it as flat as possible to the ground. And uh, it's, it's okay. It's not perfect, but it'll do. Okay, so there we go. And next, we're gonna start bringing in this stick right here. And there you go, you can already see the beginnings of that figure four. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another carve notch on this side, same exact way. We're gonna just saw it down about two inches and saw, start sawing it down straight about less than halfway through. And take your time, you don't have to rush through this. We're, we're kind of uh, hurrying it all along because we are running out of sunlight. But if you're first learning how to do this, you don't have to rush it. Just take your time. Once again, we have this little notch. And let's see if it's ready. So we got our base. There we go. You see, it's already starting to connect. You see how up here in the corner, right here, they're not perfectly perfect perpendicular because I this is kind of a slightly to an angle. Uh, you know, this you're gonna get better at this. You know, I still kind of I rushed it and I could have done this a little bit better, but it'll hold. So from here, now I need to start making a notch over here where my thumb is. Now rule of thumb when it comes to the figure four is you can make it thin like this the four or you can make it wide like this it all depends on how fast you want that rock to fall so if it's a smaller animal uh, i'm sorry if it's a slower lumbering animal you can take your time have it open like this and the rock will fall slowly and if you want something to fall quickly you know something like a, a mouse or something that's going to be very agile you kind of want to bring it in a little bit like that so I'm going to go about halfway since it's a rabbit, and I'm going to choose this side. So you see my finger right here? That's where I'm going to make start making my notch. So let's get this out of the way. Now what we're going to do here is you see this notch right here, right? We're going to do a 90 degree one right here, another notch. And this time it's going to start cutting that way. So just to show you guys, basically 90 degree on the side, we're going to do a cut this way like that so that the tip is going to be facing the tip of this one okay so here we go again once again you want to make sure that it's 90 degrees so about flat start right here OK, 
Okay, once again, going back to the first notch, it's right here, and then a 90 degree notch on this side. And the scoop goes this way, this scoop goes that way. So they're facing each other. Okay, so here's our figure four, and these are the two notches we just made. This one fits here, and this one's gonna go right there. You see that right here in this corner? So now I just need to start flattening this side. Give this a flat 90 degree spine right here, basically. Just flatten this out. Let me go a little higher. Once again, these, you're, you know, because sticks are all different sizes and different curvatures and the rocks that you're going to be working on are all different, you know, there's no exact measurements. You're going to kind of have to eyeball it and then go back and, you know, get better at it and then eyeball it and then get better at it. Okay, so I just flattened this side. Okay, guys, so here we go. Now, have you noticed? Okay, so what I wanted to do is I kind of want that seven notch right here to complement this side. So I'm trying to get these as angled as possible so they can fit together and they can hold. They still need a little bit more tightness in there. So maybe I'll just make this a little smaller. Like I said, it's just gonna be a lot of trial and error. And um, yeah, you just gotta be patient. These are best done like in your backyard when you're having a beer or something. Just passing the time, just playing with your knives. That's actually how I learned, honestly, just hanging out in my porch and just back and forth trying these out. Okay, now it's holding. It doesn't want to hold too much because, of course, you see how long this is? So there's a lot of weight here. So it makes it easier to fall. So I'm going to just saw this off in a little bit to make it smaller, but you see how it's holding? See, it's just the pressure from my hand that's holding this together. So I'm gonna stop it, say, right here. Let's try it at this part right here. It may have to, I may have to bring it in smaller, but let's just saw this off right there. And then we'll start bringing in the rock. So I'm gonna just start breaking this off. <laughs> that's fine. Okay. Let's give this a shot once more. Okay, so remember, our base is right here. Notice that this angle is uh, longer than this other angle, so we always know that this is the inside of the four. Then here comes our second stick. It complements that little seven notch right there. Then this second part, which is the screwdriver part, well, at least that's what I call it. You place it right here, and then you connect these right there. Okay. There you go. So mm, I may have to shorten this out. Depends on the size of my rock. So I'm going to just shorten this out just a little bit more. Like right here. Okay, so I brought my rock. This rock right here, nice and flat, nice and big. And usually you want your rock to be, uh, I'm estimating about five times the weight of the prey that you're after. It could be five to seven, I'm not certain. But you definitely want it, you know, enough to kill the animal right away you know, that it can't crawl out of or anything like that, or it's suffering. Okay, so once again, brief rundown. Here's our first stick. Once again, notice how this side is longer, and that's gonna be the inside of the four. Then we have the second stick. You start with that little seven notch, fits in there. Then there's a second seven notch down here. And you get your second, I mean your third stick. And you connect it. This connects there, this connects there, and then you flatten these out where they're fitting. See that, how they're fitting? As, as approximately, not perfect, but fitting enough where they're holding. And once again, I'm putting pressure at the top with my hand, and it's keeping up. It's staying still. Now what you could do at the end over here is really up to you. You can flatten it out once again, like a like a screwdriver, like a flathead screwdriver, to put your bait. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sharpen it up like a steak, and then I'm gonna place a little blackberry there for a rabbit. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do right now. 
let's just get that done. There we go. And that, I can impale a little fruit there for my animal. Okay, so moment of truth. Now you want flat ground. This is as flat as it's gonna get in this little canyon. Okay, so we have this. This part can get a little bit frustrating. Okay, so I gotta, I gotta keep that pressure. Okay, that's somewhat Okay, just that this rock ends right here, so it's kind of get that's getting in the way. Let me place this down and bring it closer to the rock. Okay, let's try that again. It's a little wobbly. Okay. So let's see. In theory, you place your bait there. Once again, I'm gonna use a blackberry or a piece of banana because I want something that's really gonna draw the animal. You know, something that's not common here. And when they put pressure there, this crushes it. And then you're gonna wanna carve several of these because they're gonna start breaking down right away, especially every time they fall. You know, and these are already about a year old stock of yucca. So you're gonna wanna make several versions of these. And the more you practice it, the better you, the smoother you get to them. So it doesn't hurt. And it's a good exercise with your knives. Okay, folks, so moment of truth. Sunset is just around the corner and the animals are about to become more active. Now you can carve the best trap in the world, but if you're placing it somewhere where your prey is not around, you're wasting your time. But, so I happen to know that this small region right here is highly populated by a lot of prey animal. Pack rat, kangaroo rat, ground squirrel, cottontail rabbit, doves, they all hang out in this region, I know for a fact. So you wanna look for signs like droppings, tracks, feathers, or fur. Uh, once again, I know this place is very populated, so we're gonna set it here for the night. So let's set up our sticks. And we are using a piece of strawberry. So it's gonna be rich and vibrant. Hopefully it smells good and it's irresistible for a prey animal. Once again, we're focusing on rabbit. I did make this piece just, a, I sharpened it just a little bit so it holds the steak a little bit. I mean, it holds the piece of uh, fruit just a little bit better. So you're always gonna be constantly adjusting your traps. That's fine, There's, that's normal. Okay, and now I'm just pressing the pressure down this direction to hold my sticks. And here's my rock once again. Some rocks are gonna be a little bit more cooperative than others, you just gotta practice, and it's all about balance. Okay, wanna balance that a little bit better. It's a little wobbly. There we go, that's better. And you want, once again, a heavy rock that's flat, and then the ground is gonna be flat as well, that way the animal is completely smushed. Okay, and now personally, what I like is the back of this rock has, it ends like a square. There's two points here, so it's evenly distributing the weight. Okay, and just to sweeten the deal, we're gonna place debris on the sides, rocks and sticks. That way the animal has to approach through one direction, and when it trips the, the trap, it's harder for him to escape. So that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, folks, so that's about the conclusion of this video. Our trap is now set. So you saw how to set up the notches on this wood, on, the, on these sticks. Um, I suggest just go ahead and take your time and practice them in your yard beforehand. Um, it gets better with, with practice, and um, it, it can be enjoyable, you know, just hanging out, having a beer, and practicing your notches. Okay, so we have it set up with a strawberry. I will throw some other pieces of strawberry in, in the nearby area just to give them a couple of free samples to entice them. 
and then we have a nice flat rock and we want nice flat surface like I said sometimes people will use an uh, will set it up beneath uh, the base of a, another large rock we're not going to do that um, so this way I know for a fact it'll crush the prey also if you notice on the sides I did set up debris so that way the animals have to come in through this way and if they trip the trap it's a lot harder for them to jump out of the way so you know they're going to be enclosed so it just raises your chances of success now in case you are depending on this for sustenance in case you are in a survival situation or living off grid and you're low on other supplies you're going to want to make several of them it's a numbers game you're going to want to set up three four five if you can in a place once again that you know is populated by what you're after um, so we're going to set these traps leave them overnight and we're going to come back tomorrow morning and fingers crossed we will be having rabbit for breakfast hopefully so that's about the conclusion of this video folks i hope you learned something if you have any questions go ahead and comment below also comment below if you've tried this and caught something that would be really fun to find out and that's about it guys so give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys next week with another video now go outside and get your boots dirty <laughs>